So in this video here, I'm going to show you how we can set up instant neural graphics primitives. So it's called instant NGP. So basically in the, one of the previous videos here on my channel, I went over this uh, nerf. So it is neural uh, radiance fields. So we, it, this can actually be used for reconstructing environments, uh, actually like reconstructing whole scenes, by only taking in 2D images. You can, for example, like take your uh, your smartphone, you can capture a bunch of 2D images and then you will just put them and feed them into this instance NGP and then we'll actually like get these renders as we see here uh, in this GitHub repository. So it's actually like really easy to set up. We just need to install a couple of like libraries, frameworks, first of all, and some programs. And then after that, we only like run a couple of command lines and then we're actually like set to go. We load in some 2D images and then we create these really nice reconstructed scenes. So again, if you want to know more about the theory and how this nerf princi principle here works under the hood, definitely check the last video out I have. I cover like how it actually like works. We're going over the paper and so on. I talk about like, we get an overview. I talk about how does it work, what can be used for, and we also see some of the results. But here we're basically just going to install instant NTP and then we're going to see how we can use it. So first of all here, we're going to look at the requirements and see what we need to install. So actually we only need to install three things, which is uh, necessary to actually like, be able to run this instant NPG and then we also have some optional requirements if we want to get like some faster training and also some DLLS support but first of all here we can see that they actually like, use so all the results here are from an RTX 3090 I have a uh, RTX 4090 so we're going to see some better results and we like to like have uh, better training or like faster training as well and then we also need a C++ 14 capable compiler so basically we're just going to install Visual Studio 2019 if you're on Windows and then we'll basically just use that for uh, for our setup. We also need CUDA. So we have CUDA version 10.2 or higher. And we also need the latest version of CMake. Then you can actually like go down here and create some like Python bindings if you want to have uh, if you want to work with Python as well. We can also have optics here. If you want to have faster mess SDF training, we can also have this Vulkan SDK if you want to have DLS as support. Also, if your GPU is actually like supporting DLS as we're not going to use those here in this video. I have those installed on my uh, computer. You'll basically just go into the website, download it, and then it will automatically detect it when you're going to build this library. So first of all here, we just go to Visual Studio. We just download Visual Studio 2019. So we can basically just go down here, install an older version. We just hit download and it will download to your computer. Just make sure that you choose the C++ development tool when you're actually like installing it uh, with the Visual Studio installer. So the second thing here that we need is the CUDA toolkit, which is basically just what we need to do to actually like utilize the G GPU for doing all of the processing. So basically you just go inside the website here on CUDA toolkit. You just hit download now and it will download the latest version uh, to your computer. First of all here, you just choose your operating system. I'm on Windows and then I want version 11. And then we just go in and local execution for the installer type. And then you will basically just uh, go through the installation and then it will install CUDA toolkit to your computer. The last thing that we need is CMake. So basically you just go inside CMake, you just hit download latest releases, and then you can basically just scroll down the bottom, find your platform, I'm on Windows, and then we just download the installer here. And then the last things here, which is actually like optional. So we actually only need three things to make this work. We need Visual Studio 2019, we need CUDA toolkit, and then we also need CMake to actually like build the binaries. Some optional features here are the optics. Basically, again, you just go in here and you just hit download. So just get started here and then you can actually like just go in and download it. So again, accept and download Windows 10. The last thing here was the Vulkan. You can just go in, hit the Windows button here and then it will download Vulkan to your computer. Uh, and then you can actually like use these optional libraries here as well when you're going to train the networks and also if your GPU supports uh, DLSS. So now we'll go back here again. I have everything installed on my computer and then we can basically just get started, do a couple of command lines and then we can actually like open up instant NGP. We can see some results. We can use some of the examples. We can also, I'm going to create another video where I'm going to capture images from my, from my own smartphone and then we're going to load them in and actually create a 3D scene based on only 2D images. And it will only tra train in like a couple of seconds. So the original Nerf paper, it took around like 30 hours to actually like train a model uh, that can that can represent or like reconstruct an environment from different kind of views. So with with instant NGP here, one of the benefits are like definitely that it only takes like a couple of seconds, maybe like 30 seconds to train a whole model on your whole image data set. 
So it's really cool. It's really fast. And it's just really awesome that they can decrease the training time uh, so much by utilizing the GPU here uh, specifically for NVIDIA GPUs. So first of all here, we're going to compile the libraries or the binaries. So first of all, we need to go in and get clone. So when we're going to do this, we need to make sure that we act like inside a developer command prompt. So if you run down to the bottom here, you can actually just type in CMD, but then you will get up the standard command prompt. If you go a bit more down here, you can actually see we can get this developer command prompt for a Visual Studio 2019. We need to make sure that we actually choose that because it's not going to work if we just choose the standard command prompt or the Anaconda prompt because we're going to use uh, the C++ compiler from, uh, from the Visual Studio environment. So basically here, we are inside our developer command prompt now. Then we can just go in and get clone the repository that we're inside now. So we're just going to copy paste that one. Here we're just going to cd back to our um, to our starting repository. So where we actually want to install this. So I'll just go inside my user directory. So we go inside users and then I go inside my own directory. And then we can basically just go in here, copy paste this git clone uh, and clone the repository. Going to copy paste. We hit enter and then we're just cloning into instant ngp. After we're actually cloned this, we're just going to cd into our instant uh, ngp and then we can go down, use the cmake files from the repository to actually like build uh, and compile the binaries. So here we can see this 60% done uh, with actually like cloning into our repository. So here we can see now it's done. We're just going to do the last things here uh, and then we should be able to go. So now it's done cloning into our directory and we can now just cd into the directory so here we have instant ngp we now cd into it and then we can basically just use cmake to build and compile the binaries so first, first of all here we're going to run this command here it will take some time and then we can actually like run the second command here after that so right now it's just detecting like our CUDA toolkits it's detecting our compilers like our C and C++ compilers we can also see that it's it found like Vulkan here. So I'm using Vulkan. It found Python. So I'm going to use that as well. We can also see it found uh, it found this optic um, library here that I'm going to use as well. So it actually like found all the different kind of things and the build files uh, have now been written to my directory. Now we can run the second command here and then this will actually like build the whole uh, library and compile it. And then it will actually like take a bit longer um it will actually like take a couple of minutes or maybe up to half an hour based on like how good your computer is so basically here we're just going to run it and then it will build and compile the binaries then we don't need to do anything else now we just ran these four commands in our command line in our developer command line after um, actually like just installing visual studio cmake and the CUDA toolkit so right now if you get some problems during the installation here i actually like got some problems with optics and I also got some other different kind of like um, problems. But if you get some problems, they have a list of possible fixes. So if you get an error here, no CUDA toolset found, architecture is empty for target. Then you can go in, follow these instructions here without reinstalling CUDA. Then you can basically just see what you need to do. So I also got this error here because I didn't have a fresh installation of uh, Visual Studio. If you have a fresh installation of all of the, the all of the installations here that I showed you, you should be good to go and you should act like just be able to run it without getting any errors. But if you get some errors, you will act like ne just need to go inside this directory. So I have the directory here and then you will have some files inside this directory. You just basically just need to copy paste them into this directory here. So I actually think that it was these CUDA files here. I just have to copy paste those into um, the build customizations inside our Visual Studio. And then when we had that, so basically it is just what it says here. Then when it, when I did that, it will actually like just recompile, I'll just recompile and then it would run. You can also see some of the other different kind of like common problems uh, there is. So here we can see no known features for uh, the compiler inside um, Microsoft Visual Studio. Uh, so we basically need to like reinstall Visual Studio, make sure, uh, make sure you run CMake for developer shell because it will not work if you just run it from a standard shell or like a standard command prompt. And you can basically just go over here if you get these errors. I only got the first error here, uh, up here, and then I got the second error for the optional library with the optics. And it was basically like the environmental variables. So here I'm just going to show you what I fixed. So here I just went into the environmental variables. I just scrolled down here at the bottom and then we can see we both have our Vulkan. Vulkan program here and then if I scroll a bit up here we have the optics install directory and here it was basically just set to 7.3.0 
I just have to like uh, change this to 7.6. So just make sure that you actually like have the correct version inside of your system uh, variables or like your environmental variables. Make sure you have the correct one uh, for the optics here. You can basically just copy paste this, go inside your uh, um, file explorer, make sure that you actually like have the correct version. So here you can see I have optics SDK 6.7.6. Uh, and then I basically just went in here, changed the environmental variables, hit OK, 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 apply. And then I just recompiled it uh, and build, build the whole library and then it worked. So it's now done compiling the program here. It took two or three minutes on my computer. So it was fairly fast. Then we can actually like, actually go down and see an example. So they act like have some examples uh, coming from this repository here. First of all, we have this Nerf Fox. We also have some other different kind of uh, examples that I'm going to show you. We're going to create our own example as well. I'm going to show you how we can actually like do that, upload our own images, uh, create our own environments, our own scenes, reconstruct them and play around with them. I'm also going to show you like how we can export them so we can use them inside like Mesh Lab or Blender or something like that. So how we can actually like, use those 3D, 3D scenes or 3D optics that we actually like reconstruct from our 2D images. Again, you just take your 2D images from your phone, throw them into this program here that we have just set up, and then you get these really nice reconstructions. So again, we also have an image of Einstein. We can do some different kind of things with that as well. We have some volume render. So here we can see we have this cloud that we can render. So we can actually like render uh, vol volumes as well. So this is one of the good things about Nerve. We have these densities here. We have a function of densities from samples of our images. As we talked about in previous videos, it is really interesting. So definitely make sure to check that out. The theory and the method behind Nerve is act like uh, really cool and interesting. So here we're just going to go inside our, we can use our build test bed. Then we can basically just go over, copy paste the example. We're going to use the Windows one. So it's basically just the opposite slashes compared to Linux. Go in, copy paste it, we throw it in here and then it will act like open up the program. Then we can see we have the program here. It starts at really bad quality and then we just train over time. So here we can just see the results is really nice. We just get better and better results as it keeps training. We can see the loss here it starts at a really high loss and then we can just see it just goes down and down and down. And now it's it's basically convert uh, converged after only five, 10 seconds. So it trained this model here in five to 10 seconds on my uh, 1490 GPU. So it acts like it's a fairly good uh, GPU, but again, this is really cool. It does just takes in a couple of images. We can actually like, go in and see the images that we get. So basically, I'll just go inside my user directory and then we can see the examples. So we go inside data, we have nurse and then we have the fox. We can see the images here. So here we basically just have all the images of the fox that we're actually like reconstructing this scene with. So here I'm just going to scroll through them. So here we can just see like we just have a phone. We just capture a bunch of images of an object or a scene that we want to reconstruct. Here we have 50 images. So again, we use 50 images and then we can create this really nice 3D render over here to the left, we can see some different kind of like features. We can see we have DLSS. If you have if you have that supported, we can set up the DLSS sharpening to one. We can also set up some vSync. We can have some dynamic resolution and stuff like that. If you have a powerful GPU, you don't really need to like play around with these parameters here. Uh, you can gain a bit of performance here. We can see like how good how good the render act like is now when I just zoom in. So over here to the left, we have a lot of different kind of like options. We can both like set some different kind of like parameters for our cameras. We can crop the point cloud uh, here as well, or like our scene uh, that we're reconstructed. We can set up some DLSS. We can set up the dynamic resolution. Uh, we can actually like also go down and make snapshot of our environment. We can also create meshes. So we can actually like mesh our reconstructed environment. Then we can export that as a 3D object. We can then import in Blender, Mesh Lab, and so on. But basically, you can tune some parameters here. You can also tune like the resolution, so we we'll get higher resolution. But it also requires more memory on your GPU. We can play around with the PNG the density range. So again, I'll create another video where I'm actually like going to go over these parameters, what they actually like mean, and how they affect your rendered environment. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just will help me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. This is a really cool program and framework that we can use. Again, we just need free programs. We just download them from Google. We go in, clone the directory or like the repository. Use CMake to just build the whole program. We open it up, we can use these examples or we can actually just go in and upload our own images from our own smartphone. 
create these really nice reconstruction of the scenes. I'm definitely going to create way more examples. This is just really cool and it's just state of the art within uh, research for reconstructing environments. Really cool, can be used for a lot of different kind of things. So I hope to see you in the next video, guys. Bye for now.